Weaving across the face of New England and creating a literal web of mystery are hundreds of thousands of miles of stone walls, including numerous other unexplained stone structures and thousands of stone chambers. The chambers appear randomly, sometimes capping the ends of great stone walls or appearing to be built into the sides of hills. These megaliths stand silently a testimony and a reminder of the antiquity of the area, but with no reminders as to their purpose or that of those who created them. The walls honeycomb the land, seeming to guide the paths of the roads they border or at other times appearing to be randomly directed. They often define what seem to be specific areas or appear to wander aimlessly through the remote forest. The most recent residents of these areas accept them as always having been there and credit ancestors, indigenous peoples, early explorers, ancient cultures, or even glaciers as the creators. They are accepted as a part of the landscape and as such their mystery becomes folklore and the facts of their creation are hidden in plain sight. They are silent, ancient tracings of times long past a testimony of a fragment of our history not yet recorded or acknowledged. Yet similar structures appear all over the world and have been chronicled and recorded for centuries in books and in literature. One needs only to stand in the presence of one of the stone chambers to pause for a moment within one of them, to feel the antiquity and know that unusual means and methods were used in their creation. What has most recently come to light is the incredible number of these stone structures that are scattered across the landscape and are slowly being sacrificed to the expansion of a new generation which is not mindful or focused upon preserving their own history. Countless numbers of the chambers, miles of stone walls and other structures have been carelessly dismantled or altered with no regard to the antiquity they represent. The stone walls represent yet another aspect of the mysteries of the stones. In 1939, using data from an 1872 Department of Agriculture report on fences, it was estimated that there was a combined length of approximately a quarter of a million miles of stone walls in the New England area. A length equivalent to a single wall stretching around the earth over ten times. The mass of stone used in the walls is greater than that from all the ancient stone monuments in the world combined. Utilizing modern technology, these numbers would clearly be increased exponentially. Because of the vast numbers and extreme lengths of the stone walls, most New Englanders are aware of their presence. They are obviously difficult to miss. Few, however, have any idea as to their purpose or for that matter, who actually created them. They have been described as boundary markers, stock fences, and property demarcations. What escapes reason and understanding is that they are often random, close together, and without direction. Starting and stopping for no apparent reason, going up hills and across ridges, in areas that could not have been planted or used for grazing or agriculture. Often closely connected to these walls are other unusual structures, most notably thousands of stone chambers scattered across the landscape. Despite being described as colonial root cellars, ice houses, and animal birthing chambers, there is ample evidence that these chambers existed long before the European settlers arrived. Various design elements preclude any possibility that they were used as living structures, and aspects of astronomical or seasonal alignments have often been noted, and almost casual apathy seems to surround them. Beside the stone walls and chambers, there are several other stone anomalies, including subterranean structures, stone circles, standing rows of stones, balanced rocks, stone piles, commonly known as cairns, 
and several other strange structures, possibly even including dry stone constructed bridges. A time clock is ticking. We need to preserve these fragments of history before they are erased forever by new technology and creeping industry, rendering us void of a past and removing the history of the very foundations of our country. Antiquity has attempted to teach us that the true quest of discovery lies not in seeking to create new horizons, but rather in removing the veils of theory masquerading as fact that cloud our vision, and clearing our sight to encompass the totality of our environment. Although New England has the greatest preponderance of stone edifices in the world, scattered across the globe there are examples of similar structures. Other countries far exceed the United States in their attempt to preserve history. It is important to restate here that the stone structures of New England comprise the largest collection of stone structures in the world. Here we present but a few of these amazing structures found in the New England states and surrounding areas. The countryside of Connecticut is crisscrossed with stone walls randomly meandering along the roads, intersecting fields, tracing unusual patterns along stony ledges and through dense forested areas. Stone chambers appear alongside busy roads and perch on deserted rocky hillsides. One of the most publicized areas is that of Gunjiwamp in the town of Groton. Gathered on this site of over a hundred acres, are examples of stone chambers, stone circles, standing stones, and colonial foundations, representing habitation for thousands of years. An illustration of how the environment can reclaim and erase the presence of humanity. Massachusetts as well has an amazing collection of stone structures. From the unusual collection of balancing stones in Lynn to the standing rocks of Lowell, these majestic stones stand as silent sentries of times long past, still at their posts, marking their place in time. New York State's historic Hudson Valley Basin holds the largest documented number of stone chambers and walls to date. Dozens of chambers are right along busy highways, while others are sheltered in the abundant forests that are a part of local land trusts or state and national park systems. These areas have attracted interest in the past decades because of the unusual number of chambers that have been found in such a concentrated area. There have been books and pamphlets focused on the chambers and walls, and a very few dedicated individuals have tried to draw attention to these unusual structures from out of time. New Hampshire's town of Salem has been acclaimed as being the site of the oldest man-made construction in the United States. Called American Stonehenge, this site comprises roughly 30 acres and is a collection of chambers, walls, standing stones, and other stone structures. It is speculated that it was built by an ancient culture, which was determined from the carbon dating of charcoal pits, dating them back to 2000 BC. As of 2010, the states of Vermont, Rhode Island, Maine, Ohio, Pennsylvania, and New Jersey all have an impressive collection of stone structures, still standing and intact. Walls wind their way throughout these areas as well, connecting and reminding us all of a time and perhaps even a culture and people the history books have neglected to mention. New England and its surrounding neighbors still are the curators of the largest collections of stone structures in the world. 
From the early 1600s, there is documented speculation as to who had constructed the walls and chambers, and why, clearly indicating that the early settlers to this country were not their creators. Many of these walls are four feet high with a six-foot foundation. Some walls are 12 feet high and 20 feet wide. What kind of animal commonly used in agricultural regions would require a wall of that size? The effort to build the hundreds of thousands of miles of stone walls, chambers, and structures would have been the most costly and labor-intensive undertaking in colonial history. Yet there is not even the slightest mention of this massive construction project in the historical records. The Native Americans in residence during that time were not fence builders. They respected the land and did not partition it for any reason, most especially to mark personal possession. And so the question still remains and drifts upon the ether. Who did build them and why? Mankind, humanity, is on a journey through time. As a species, we have traveled through time periods marked by ignorance and darkness, enlightenment and reason. We have marked time as to development, religion, industry and empires. Thousands of years of evolving our knowledge and wisdom, naming each phase of expansion with yet another apparent conquest of the unknown. This current time has been called a new age, one theoretically marked by exploration and illumination a time of progress and development. Merriam-Webster defines progress as the gradual betterment, especially the progressive development of humankind. Is the destruction of antiquity and history the kind of foundation upon which we want to build? By destroying the legacy of our past, we have nothing to build upon. These walls and chambers are more than just piles of rocks. Though found all over the world, these stones speak a common language, and they tell a story of our footprints in time. They hold information and insight of where we came from and help to provide a foundation for us to build upon for future generations. We are but a small voice, a whisper if you will, Join your voices to ours to create a roar of protest against the destruction and apathy towards the largest collection of stone structures in the world. Voice by voice, we can create a crescendo of outrage, a collective voice that cannot be ignored or silenced. Together, we can halt the erasure of the tracings of our past from the landscape, and perhaps, in time, truly learn the secrets that they hold for us.